thawed in, however, the halibut livers will have been taken to the factory for processing to remove the valuable oil. Here they will be made to give up those vitamin treasures unsuspected until 20 years ago. These rich supplies of vitamins, vitamin A and D, are found dissolved in the oil of the halibut's liver. Their extraction is normally carried out on a large scale in the factory. Here it is demonstrated as a laboratory process only. The livers are first minced to allow reagents to deal with them more quickly. They are now placed in a tank. A solution of caustic potash is added. The potash breaks up the tissue and materials of the livers and so releases the oil. For this to happen, the contents of the tank must be brought to the boil. On the large scale, this is done by blowing in live steam. Here, a gas burner is used. The mixture is then allowed to stand for several hours. Some of the fats present in the halibut liver oil form a soap with the potash, and this turns the liberated oil into an emulsion. This emulsion is broken so that the oil floats to the top, after which it can be separated from the soap by drawing off the soap layer. To ensure complete separation, the crude oil is washed by agitation with water and then passed through a centrifuge. The oil is next deodorized, that is, the volatile substances responsible for the fishy smell are removed. For this purpose it is filtered, as shown here on the actual factory scale, and then led to a large closed vessel connected to powerful vacuum pumps. Steam is blown through the oil to volatilize the fishy components, which are carried off as vapor by the vacuum to condenser. The oil is now clean and clear and fit for consumption. Having extracted the oil on a large scale from a catch of livers, the next thing is to determine its potency, that is to say, the amounts of vitamins A and D present. This is always done in the laboratory. The potency varies from fish to fish, according to age, season, etc., and also from catch to catch. For the vitamin A tests, the oil must be made as free as possible from non-vitamin material. Accuracy is the keynote of this and the following testing operations, since the amount of vitamins present, though small, is very precious. The fatty non-vitamin materials in an accurately weighed amount of oil are turned into a soap by boiling with alcoholic caustic potash. The small amount of material which has not been turned into a soap now contains all the vitamins. This material is dissolved out by shaking with ether. On standing, the vitamin ether solution separates from the water and soap as a distinct layer. The soap solution is drawn off, shaken with fresh ether and the process repeated. This is performed some five or six times. The various ether solutions are then mixed and washed by shaking with water and again separated. The ether is finally removed by being distilled in a current of nitrogen. The vitamin A is left behind in the flask as a residue. This residue is now dissolved in a known volume of solvent, in this case alcohol, for the actual determination of the amount of vitamin A present. The determination is now done by physical chemical methods. These depend on the fact that the solution absorbs light of a certain wavelength, namely 128 millimicrons, the amount of light absorbed being proportional to the amount of vitamin A present and the thickness of the layer of solution through which it is made to pass. Unfortunately, this light is invisible, being ultraviolet light. It may, however, be measured by means of a photoelectric cell since when it falls on such a cell, it produces an electric current, the amount of which depends on the intensity of light. When the vitamin A solution is placed in the beam of ultraviolet light, the vitamin absorbs some of the light, and so less light reaches the cell. 
the current is reduced. The amount of reduction is proportional to the amount of vitamin A, so that by measuring the falling current, we can calculate the amount of vitamin A in the solution. The instrument used for this purpose is the photoelectric spectrophotometer. The rack containing quartz cells is removed. A sample of the vitamin A solution under test is poured into a fresh cell and inserted into the rack, which is then replaced. With a blank cell in the beam, the wavelength of 328 millimicrons is selected and the control adjusted so that the needle on the dial is at zero. On bringing the vitamin solution into the beam, the current falls. It is compensated by a further current, controlled by a dial, which is calibrated to read the percentage of light transmitted. From this, the amount of vitamin A present can be calculated. So much for the vitamin A. The amount of vitamin D present in the oil can only be measured biologically, that is to say, by measuring its effect upon animals. Rats are most commonly used. These are taken from colonies carefully tended and specially inbred to ensure similarity of behavior. The principle is that large numbers of young rats are fed on a diet of a carefully controlled composition containing all the necessities except vitamin D. After three weeks, they develop rickets. This is shown by X-raying the rats at intervals until the rickitic condition is apparent. The rats are given an anesthetic and placed beneath the X-ray tube on a shielded photographic film. A standard exposure is made and the film developed to show the bone formation. The rickitic condition shows itself on the film as a gap between the limb joints being most apparent at the femur. This is due to the lack of bone growth owing to the absence of vitamin D. On the right is a rat with rickets, used as a check. On the left, a rat with normal bone formation. The rats are now divided into six groups. Groups one, two, and three are given known doses of an international standard preparation of vitamin D. Group 2 getting double the amount of group 1, and group 3 double that of group 2. The groups 4, 5, and 6 are given the preparation being tested, 5 getting double the amount of 4, and 6 double that of 5. The dose is given by the mouth with a micro syringe, which accurately measures doses of one hundredth of a millimeter. After 10 days on the vitamins, X-ray photographs of the bones of the foreleg are taken. They show bone formation which is proportional to the amount of vitamin D given to the rat. The photographs are now examined by an expert who assigns a score to each bone in comparison with a standard set showing 12 degrees of cure between complete rickets north and complete cure 12. In this way, each rat of the group is given a score and the average score for the group is found. Since a known amount of the standard preparation of vitamin D is a known score, it is possible to calculate from the observed score of the test sample how much vitamin D is present. The calculations are lengthy and complicated and require a calculating machine for their rapid performance. Before the oil can be sent to its consumers all over the world, it must be adjusted to a fixed content of the vitamins A and D, so that the consumer knows that when he takes a definite dose of oil, he is getting definite amounts of vitamins. For the oil is but the vehicle, the vitamins the thing. This fixed vitamin content is affected by mixing the calculated amounts of oils from the various catches in large tanks. The blend is finally clarified by passing through centrifugal machines after which it is again tested to check strength. It is now ready for making up either in bottle or capsule form. A certificate of the vitamin potency determined in the final test is attached to each bottle or package of capsules. This practice was introduced by the Crookes Laboratory as a guarantee of the quality of their material. Now, untouched by hand, 
Gallon after gallon of halibut liver oil is mechanically bottled or filled into convenient gallon capsules. The world's need is great. This concentrated vitamin finds its way far afield. Disease must be combated. Inadequate food supplies must be augmented with the necessary health-giving material. And so must badly selected diets. Help is prepared for distribution. This is the end of the long chain, a chain in which man has added his skill and knowledge at each link. The natural cycle of organic life concentrates and stores essential vitamins in the liver of the halibut. The fisherman adds his courage and endurance. The technician his labor in operating the machines and extracting the oils. The chemist his precision and skill to test and analyze. The doctor, the biologist, find out how best use may be made of the vitamins to satisfy human needs. That first triumphal discovery of vitamins some 35 years ago has borne its full fruit. The small, rich globules of concentrated health harvested from the Arctic seas are now available to all people in all lands.